earnings per share so this is the concept covered under los g and los h uh, in understanding income statement topic okay so earnings per share or eps is one of the important profitability measures now when it comes to earnings per share okay here earnings refers to share of net income that is owned by only common shareholders not preference shareholders now here you can see the formula to calculate earning per share which is net income minus preferred dividends divided by weighted average number of shares outstanding now why we are deducting preference dividend here because while calculating net income we have not included preference dividend as an expenses therefore the very first thing to calculate earnings per share the very first thing what you need to do you need to eliminate preference dividend because just now i told you earnings refers to share of net income owned by only common shareholders so therefore first what you need to do you need to deduct preference dividend from net income now here you can see the general format of income statement from sales to net income and you can see we have not included preference dividend as an expense so therefore from net income the very first adjustment what you need to do you need to eliminate you need to deduct preference dividend now what you will get net income minus preference dividend you will get income income available for common shareholders so here you can see in formula net income minus preference dividend is nothing but income available to common shareholders so the numerator net income minus preference dividend is income available to common shareholders and you need to divide this with weighted average number of shares outstanding now let's see what are weighted average number of shares outstanding and how we can calculate so weighted average number of shares outstanding refers to the number of shares that were outstanding over the year adjusted for stock splits and stock dividends this is very very important you need to remember weighted average number of shares outstanding are adjusted for stock splits and stock dividends now if if you do not know what stock splits are so what you can do uh, go in description box i have given the link over there and watch the video on stock split so i have covered what is stock split what what its effect on prices and number of shares and why company do you know stock split so everything is covered in that video i have covered in an equity part of security market indices so do watch that video and stock dividends are nothing but you can say bonus shares so when it comes to dividends company can give you cash dividend or it can give you stock dividend so stock dividend means bonus shares so you will get uh, free shares okay you will get shares free of cost so that is stock dividend okay so remember this point these shares are adjusted for stock split and stock dividend and then what you need to do you need to assign weight okay then you need to assign weight after doing adjustment okay first you need to adjust for stock splits and stock dividends and then you need to assign weight as per the proportion of the year they were outstanding let's understand with the help of example let's say on january 1st okay let's say if you are following calendar year okay we are following calendar year from jan to december on 1st january company issued 50000 shares now these shares are outstanding for entire year because this is issued on january 1st so these shares are outstanding for entire year so the weightage will be 100% to these shares to assign weight what i will do i will multiply this with 12 by 12 okay for so 12 years right out of out of 12 months okay out of 12 months these shares are outstanding for entire 12 months so 12 by 12 now on 1st july okay company issued another new shares 25000 now these shares are outstanding for 6 months from july to december so to assign weight what we need to do we need to multiply with 6 by 12 out of 12 months okay these shares are outstanding for 6 months so to assign weight you need to multiply with 6 by 12 now here you can see the denominator is same okay 12 here is also you can see the denominator is same 12 so you can 
also write in this way this formula 50,000 okay into 12 plus 25,000 into 6 and then you can divide with 12 now 50,000 into 12 you will get 6 lakh 25,000 into 6 okay you will get 1 lakh 50,000 and now divide with 12 because we need to find average so that's why we are dividing with 12 so 7 lakh 50,000 okay divide by 12 now when you do this calculation okay 7 lakh 50,000 divided by 12 okay you will get answer 62,500 so weighted average shares I will say it is 62,500 more on this in next video I will cover in depth how we can calculate okay weighted average number of shares how to do adjustment of stock split and stock dividends everything i will discuss at this stage you just understand while calculating weighted average number of shares we need to first adjust for stock splits and stock dividends and then we need to assign weight as per the proportion of the year they were outstanding now third important point about eps is Companies are required to report both basic and diluted EPS at the bottom of income statement. So this is the general statement that companies need to report both basic and diluted EPS. Now whether company need to report only basic EPS or they also need to report diluted EPS that completely depend on you know capital structure. Okay, whether company is having okay, whether company is having simple capital structure or complex capital structure now assuming let's say company is having simple capital structure so if company is having simple capital structure they need to report only only basic eps if company is having complex capital structure then company need to report both basic eps and diluted eps now how to check whether company is having simple capital structure or complex capital structure for that i will take you to the capital structure here you can see two different capital structure okay this is capital structure equity capital here you can check it is one lakh dollar eight percentage non-convertible preference capital okay which is fifty thousand dollar ten percentage non-convertible bonds here you can see it is fifty thousand dollar now capital structure gives you the idea about source of funds so here you can see company has raised two lakh dollar okay from different sources from equity from preference shares and from bonds now here you can see the important point is to focus on non-convertible in capital structure if company is having non-convertible securities so this type of capital structure is known as simple capital structure okay this is simple capital structure now here check capital structure now here you, here you can check here the equity capital is one lakh dollar eight percent convertible preference capital 10% convertible bonds, warrants, stock options. So if company is having any convertible security, okay, which can be converted into equity share. So this type of capital structure is referred as complex capital structure. If company is having any one of the convertible securities, okay, it can be any one preference capital, it can be convertible bonds, convertible preference or it can be you know warrants and stock options as well so warrants are issued to public whereas stock options company issued to uh, employees so this is the only difference between warrants and stock options so warrants and stock options are also convertible into equity share so if company is having any one security which is convertible into equity share then such capital structure is known as complex capital structure and if capital structure is complex then company need to report both basic and diluted eps now let's understand what 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 will be the impact of eps if if uh, convertible preference or convertible bonds are 
convert it into equity shares what will be the impact on eps see if if preference shareholders convert their bonds into equity shares then company have to issue new equity shares if company issue new equity shares then weighted average number of shares will increase okay denominator will increase if denominator will increase then eps will fall so that's why we are saying this is diluted eps okay diluted eps the word diluted means reduction in shareholding value so if if diluted eps is below okay basic eps if diluted eps is less than basic eps then convertible securities are known as dilutive securities okay let's say preference shareholders prefer to convert their shares into equity shares and because of this conversion the eps decreases then preference shares will be termed as dilutive securities now at times this is also possible if you convert any convertible security into equity shares your eps may increase okay your eps may increase so if if after conversion eps is greater than basic eps then those securities are known as anti anti dilutive securities then in this case you know we will consider basic eps as our dilutive eps okay so these are the some important points which you need to remember so that's it in this video in next video i will cover how we can calculate weighted average number of shares how we can do the adjustment of stock splits and stock dividends and how to assign weight that i will cover in next video now guys if you want to purchase okay recorded lectures of cfa level 1 2022 syllabus then you can contact us on 9860 770253 so these are the features you can see you will get quality content doubt solving support will be there for you okay we will have practice sessions that will be update to you we also have you know test series and we will give you a proper preparation schedule now the faculty of this will be myself okay manish sajdev my name is manish sajdev by profession i am a trainer and option fund manager so let me give you the brief introduction about myself so my name is manish sajdev by profession i am a trainer i take training sessions on cfa level 1 and on technical analysis now in my training career i got opportunity to work with bs institute limited and with itm group of institution as a trainer so guys till date i have total 12 years of experience in training field i am also a founder of shri sign investments now at shri sign investments what we do we basically invest our client money in option writing strategies the goal is to generate up to 2% return every month see in today's time if you invest your money in bank fixed deposit or recurring deposit or you are investing your money in ppf scheme so on an average you know you can earn 6 to 8% return every year now here i want my clients to earn higher returns better returns compared to what these products are offering in market so with this vision i have started shree sai investments the vision statement of shree sai investment is to make every client money double in 4 years of time okay so this was the brief introduction about myself so if you are interested in purchasing any one or two specific subjects or all 10 subjects then you can contact me on this number 9860770253 thank you